When an economy is troubled, the attendant lack of jobs, loss of existing ones, and rise in poverty, the question that readily comes to mind is what to do to create wealth to stave off hunger and piling bills. Now, most times, the people, including the educated, are at loss about what to do. Professionals and operators in the digital space say Nigerian youths need to embrace technological innovations to create wealth and prosperity for themselves. Also coming up on the show, as the incoming gap in prepares to take over by May 29th, Oxfam Nigeria has set an agenda on how it could address some of the challenges confronting the country. It charged the new government on the need to take urgent steps towards ending hunger, reducing inequality and reducing the number of Nigerians living below the poverty line. A business Insight starts now. I am Justin Akadone. Welcome back. Here yeah, are uh, some roundup of business headlines. We'll begin from the crude oil theft story. The House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee has threatened to summon the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubu Kamalami, and other top government officials about the alleged loss of $2.4 billion from illegal sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil. Malami, the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, and others have failed to appear before the committee chaired by Mark Miller on Wednesday. They were invited to participate in the committee's probe of inflows from recoveries from whistleblowers and expenditures. The committee, however, said it is given the appointees one last opportunity to appear before it and speak on inflows from recoveries from whistleblowers. At GSCL allegedly for consultancy services, which allegedly were approved, they say, by the General's Office of the Approval of Mr. President. We will make this further appeal to the Honorable of Finance and to the General Federation and all others who have not responded or are not honored the committee's invitation. To do so in the national interest. By 2014, there was a presidential committee to investigate uh, crude oil theft in Nigeria. And I had the privilege to serve on that committee. But the terms of the committee was not about uh, the was not tagged, I mean was not about investigating forty eight million stolen crude. Now, a PWC Nigeria's report released has disclosed that the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, paid a total sum of 69.92 billion naira in tax reforms in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Now, the report titled Tax Reforms in Nigeria Meets or Reality also stated that the FIRS received 321.34 billion naira, 862.612 million dollars, and 114,000 euros tax reform applications in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Now, the federal government says it will increase excise tax on tobacco products from 30% ad valorem to 50% as part of measures to control tobacco smoking in the country. Hair Tobacco Control Unique Non Communicable Disease Division of the Federal Ministry of Health, Dr. Mangaya Malau, disclosed this at the National Tobacco Control Budget Advocates meeting in Abuja. He said that presently the federal government imposed a 30% tax on tobacco product, but it is, or its target was to increase to 50% in order to meet the World Health Organization standard. Obingi, the position of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria on that tomorrow on Business Insight. Well, moving on now, there is a knowledge gap and information in Africa, and as such, people need to understand what to do and apply information to create wealth. This formed part of discourse at the Wealth Creation Summit 
organized by Knowledge Digest Africa, with speakers from Africa and other parts of the world. Now, the founder of Knowledge Digest Africa, Samson Olatunde, joins me now on this discuss. Many thanks for joining me, Samson, on Business Insights. All right, uh, there is a knowledge gap and information in Africa in terms of digital learning and wealth creation. How can this be bridged? The very, for me, can you hear me? Clearly? Yes, go ahead, I can hear you, yeah. Okay, for me, I think we need to just start by looking at it from thinking around the curriculum of uh, from the primary school to secondary school to higher institution. I think that it would be nice for the government to begin to think about introducing technical uh, and soft skills into all of this curriculum. Because, I mean, if you look at, for instance, in China, an average uh, person out of secondary school or primary school have one or two technical skills. I mean, we have that in some of the polytechnics, but if we can integrate that from the primary, secondary, and higher institution, I think it would be a, a good way to begin to look at a way of getting people to acquire certain skills. I mean, soft skills that would help them understand a critical aspect about, you know, becoming more relevant in terms of the career uh, field, in terms of entrepreneurship, what are the necessary skills that they need to know, understanding sales, understanding um, the aspect of um, digital skills that is available. I mean, you, you look at what is happening all over the world now. There's a lot of skill gap currently in Africa. And if you look at a uh, different part of the world that is developed, that is being developed, you realize that there's a need for us to begin to have more people within that space to do a lot. So you are, we're talking about electrical car, we're talking about water car. I mean, Nigerians are still using petrol, uh, diesel kind of car. That's a long, a long way to go. We're talking about people learning on the go. I mean, there's a lot of hassle strikes that happen, and then people cannot learn on the go, unlike different online courses, different institutes, having where people can learn on different platforms. You know, when we look at it from there, I'm going to think about what happened to COVID, uh, made us realize that people can work from home. I mean, instead of just staying nine to five, you know, in a, in a work environment, you know, so COVID introduced us to many things. So companies realize that they can reduce their cost. Many things can be done from where people are. And then that introduced a lot of, you know, tools that they were not using before, technical um, tools or technological tools rather they were not using before to make things happen. So I feel that uh, if we can, we work on our curriculum in from the, uh, primary, secondary, and high institution, it goes a long way to give us the kind of uh, results that we need. And that reduces what we call uh, the knowledge gap that we have in Africa. All right, now quickly, at the recently concluded Wealth Creation Summit, which you convened, experts harped on monetizing of expertise and experience. How can individuals and maybe startups key into this? So we, we thought of the fact that you know, it, it, yeah, knowledge has to go beyond the formal education. I mean, we have to begin to think about experiential learning, experiential learning by which people learn from people that are already doing it, not just people that have read uh, from somewhere and trying to pass the information. And then we thought of how can we even have this knowledge in a one-stop uh, digital knowledge bank, whereby I have access to login and I can have access to many, many features that can help me. For instance, on a go, I can listen to broadcasts of different aspects, showing me, you know, step-by-step -step guide of how to do stuff. I can begin to think about getting mentorship from the same people, wherever I may be all over the world, especially in African country. And beginning to think about looking at it from the aspect of taking a master class where there are many videos that I can have access to. And we feel that the only way we can do this is to begin to look for experts in different African countries, have a collaboration with them based on their content, their knowledge, their experiences, their results, and give them access to our own platform and then begin to build a community of uh, digital survey professionals. We felt um, in our own thinking pattern that if we can have a one-stop digital knowledge bank, that gives access to people to one-stop uh, information platform where you have access to learn on the go, you have access to virtuals, you have access to podcasts, you have access to mentorship, you have access to even sell 
some of the things you have packaged in terms of product based on knowledge you have acquired within and outside the platform. And then that reduces uh, the kind of knowledge gap we're talking about. So not, it's not just talking about the problem, but we're thinking about the solution. Solution about me getting into another country and have someone who is a professional in that field that can walk me through the process. And, and look at what is happening. I, many, many people are trying to migrate from one country to another, especially in, in Nigeria or in different parts of Africa. Now, when you migrate to a new city, you want to understand the culture, certain things, what is happening in your industry. Now, if you have a platform that can walk you through that process of what you need to know, step-by-step -step guide of what you need to learn, opportunities in that region. I mean, you have all of that in one-stop digital knowledge bank. It gives you access to be able to even have more confidence that you're not going to feel getting into that new city or that new environment. So what Knowledge Digest Africa oh, platform is trying to do is to bring Samson, the gap you hear me? Trying to knowledge gap within the industry. All right, Samson, uh, just before we go, because of um, time sake, uh, let's just talk about the future of outsourcing and freelancing uh, for productivity and profitability in workplace. Is it positive or negative in 30 seconds, please? Absolutely, it's positive. I mean, so people that are freelancers, who are freelancers, people that have the skill set needed, uh, for individual organizations. I mean, so you're talking about content writer, graphics designer, video editor, uh, someone that is good in proofreading. You know, all of that skill set uh, that is needed in the 21st century, those who know how to go about it, social media managers. I mean, we have a lot of them, web developer, web designer, programmers. They are freelancers. And many people prefer to hire more of the freelancers. Right you have less supervision. People can have access to work without you supervising them. They can deliver in prompt time for you. They can give you the best in terms of results. And that's what I think what has, has happened to many organizations that are doing well now. They have seen that they can decide to hire an expert without them resuming their office nine to five, then working where they are, but there's a timeline of their target and there's an MOU around that. So that's the future of work where I can get into the office, have one hour to get all of the brief, and then from where I am, I can work to deliver results. That reduces the cost for an organization, for instance, because you don't need to have your power to be on from morning to night. That it helps in terms of the results though. that you get. So in, in, we talk about the future of... All right, Samson. And take me categorically that is a it's yes positive. for me. All right, thank you so much. We have to let you go. We have to bring you back again to talk about um, all of these issues as they affect um, Nigerians and, of course, Africans in general. We do appreciate your time. As Samson Olatunde, founder, Knowledge Digest Africa.